What's going on YouTube? Technician Troy here. I've been saying I was going to do a story on this car. Well, the time has come. What we have here is a 1972 Chevy Monte Carlo. Started its life off as a 350, 350 automatic car, obviously. Had AC, just not really too many bells and whistles. It was a manual uh, windows, locks. It had power steering, power brakes. It was a bench seat car originally. Um, and I bought it in 2000. Uh, it's probably been 11 or 12 years. I'm not sure. That calls math. 11, I think. Yeah, I think it was 11. 11. Somewhere it's, in there. It's math. Well, math is hard. So I bought this car in about 2011. It was going to be my street racer slash drag strip car. Originally, the car was mint green metallic that had faded to a mushed pea green, if you will. The interior of it, the bench seat was covered in what looked to be like your grandmother's drapes. It was floral pattern. Luckily, the driver in it uh, had pretty much wore out the bench seat and they duct taped over most of the flower pattern. So that was, that was good. It almost matched. The duct tape was close to matching that weird gross green color. But the story behind this car was, is it was a Craigslist find. That's right, I said Craigslist when it was a thing, when you didn't have to pay and got all the weird ads. Got on Craigslist one morning, was having breakfast with my parents. My dad was supposed to get a 2012 or 2013 Mustang GT that was all done up body-wise. It was an automatic. My dad's not a manual transmission guy. He's got two bad knees, so I understand. But I happened to get on Craigslist, saw the car, Fell in love with it because I knew what the drivetrain was when I read the description. So it started its life off as a 350, but when I purchased the car, the drivetrain was done. I can't take credit for the drivetrain. I really can't take credit for much of anything other than the fuel injection system, but we'll talk to that here in a bit. So me and Nick the Van Man 90 actually went down to Murfreesboro to pick this thing up. We looked at the car. The car looked decent, all right? The, the body wasn't perfect but it looked good there wasn't a lot of rust or anything like that drove it around the block with the guy and my dad was with me and he said how about you drive it hands the guy the keys he gets in starts it up and i know it's going to be a wild ride he drops it into first gear and just puts her to the rug and the car just pulls like a bat out of hell i mean it's flying he smacks it into second gear it just keeps going it's just I mean, just absolutely train rolling down the road, right? Smacks it into third. The nose never planes out. It's just pulling it and pulling and pulling. Where we do this at is in a area, uh, we're gonna call Mexico, but there's black marks everywhere. And we asked the guy, you know, have you, have you been here before? He says, ah, once or twice. Yeah, right, once or twice. He's, we've put tires on it since, but they were bald when we picked it up. So inevitably I bought the car. It was gonna be my toy. My dad was gonna have his, we were gonna have father-son show cars. I was gonna have a, basically a ratty old muscle car. Well, what happened was my dad still fell through. So I told him, you sacrificed a lot. Whenever, you know, I was being raised, you gave up cars, you gave up guns, a lot of things you sacrificed. So I just grabbed the keys out of my pocket. I tossed them to him and he takes them. The next weekend, we start tearing the car completely apart. We've had the car for three weeks, okay? I've maybe put a thousand miles on the car since we had it. We tear the car apart, he wants it to be pretty. So we take the bench seats out, we buy some Pro Car Scat racing seats because he wants the bolster, that way he doesn't slide around. The steering wheel was sticky, you know, that old GM leather just breaks down. So I bought him a mahogany uh, steering wheel and we wanted to change the color a bit, but I wanted to be true to the era. So this is actually forest metallic green and it is a proper 70s era from 1969 i believe to 1972 i believe this color was in fact uh in production on gm cars now it's absolutely disgusting right now i have not finished up the wiring on everything to get it clean and tidy before i can pull it out and clean it up when the car is clean and buffed you can take a tape measure stick it to the fender and walk out 26 inches and you can still read 26 inches on the tape measure. That is not an exaggeration. So when I picked the car up, it was a 400 small block. It'd been punched over to a 406. It's got a 204 hour transmission, 12 bolt rear end with a 355 Eaton locker. It's a solid drivetrain. Personally, 
I would love to put a big block in the car because I think it just would fit better in the full frame heavy car that it is. If you come up here, I can kind of show you around a little bit. It's got a pretty wicked cam in it. I've got the cam card. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. It had no brakes. Power brakes were pretty much gone. The guy lived dangerously. He liked to party, okay? So I put a, a, a vacuum canister on it. I've put a four core aluminum radiator in it because let's be honest, the 406, it gets hot, all right? You got thin cylinder walls and it gets hot pretty quick in traffic. So I put a four core aluminum radiator in it. Originally it had a 750 or 770 single pumper Holly on it. Pulled that off because it completely went to crap. Been sitting too long, tried to rebuild it. The body was stripped out. It was pitted, it was porous. It had been rebuilt too many times is what I'm saying. So I pulled it off and I put a 750 double pumper on it fired it up, it ran good, it was running, well, I say it ran good. Holly likes to make them pig rich so you don't burn one down and you blame them, so I had a 750 on it for a while. Well, I have no problem with carburetors, like most. Carburetors can be perfectly reliable. Problem mm -hmm. is, my dad wanted the modern, that's why he was looking at the Mustang, right? He wanted power windows, tilt, cruise, AC, ease of fire and function, he likes it. Well. I went with the Sniper EFI system for him. There's a lot of stuff out there that I could say that's great. There's a lot of stuff out there that I could say that's bad. A lot of people have bad issues with them. So far, we haven't got to drive the car yet. We're getting to that point. I have to clean up, as you can see, this rat's nest of wiring here that me, Nick the Van Man 90, and Daddy's Money Garage, as one of them sits over there, the other one runs my camera. It's hot. It's hot, it is. Um, but they were here, and they we absolutely thrashed on this car. My parents were on vacation. The car had not run in about six years because we hadn't had everything pieced back together. Mostly because we were doing interior, we were putting electric windows in it because my dad can't reach all the way across to roll it down. I'm 6'4", he's 5'8", 5'9", so it's kind of tough for him. I can do it, he can't. So we put power windows and all that stuff in it. And I asked these guys to come out and give me a hand and it was a very, very long day. I started at six o'clock, they started trickling in around eight o'clock or so. Austin showed up, he really helped out. John showed up, he really helped out. Nick showed up and they absolutely went to work with this thing with me. So we did most of the wiring. Me and John did the uh, wiring for the fuel pump. It's got an electric in tank now, no longer on the frame. We went to the front here and we started wiring things up. I think I did most of the wiring chasing down ignition hot. Nick and Austin helped out with the uh, low car uh, TV kick down cable and the throttle cable and Austin went and got a haircut. I did the oil change and plugs. Oh, okay. So he, he did the routine maintenance. And yeah. helped tune it. Okay. Tuning is through a computer. It's that easy. That's not true. He did help set initial timing while I'm checking the computer. Nick was in there setting things up too. So he did help. I just like giving him crap. I hooked I the transmission back basically. up because the torque converter switch got unplugged somehow. Yeah. Somehow or another, uh, this has got an electronic converter lockup on a switch. Not a huge fan of it. I got a little, uh, I guess you could say, uh, angry with the wiring underneath the dash and I pulled the switch apart and I didn't know how it went back together. So John so graciously took over on that, took care of it. Uh, whether it works or not has yet to be determined, but we'll get back to that. We'll find so out quick. what happened is, is we went to fire this thing up and it had all the wiggities and no fire. All right, it would fire up, die, fire up and die. So what we wound up doing is we went through on the computer module programmer. I'll, I'll show you that. We'll get in there and I'll kindly pull that over to you and show you out. All right, so this is a Sniper EFI computer screen. When you initially turn the key on, you can hear the fuel pump prime. This guy powers up, gives you all your info that you need, right? Well, what we were running into, the problem was, is when we fired the key up, we would lose power to the computer and it would no longer fire the fuel pump or the injectors. Well, we were initially putting it on, if I'm not mistaken, we were running it on um, magnetic pickup, correct? Yeah, we That did not work. This particular setup liked the uh, coal negative. Uh, the magnetic system was meant to be run with a 6AL box, thank you. Yeah. Like a 6AL box. I'm not running that right now and I also don't have that particular, the uh, HyperSpark MSD distributor in there right now. So once this thing fired off, and let me just tell you, this is, uh, it was something to behold. It fired off, it ran for 35, 40 minutes when we got everything set in. We heard that fuel pump prime. 
and it was just twist to the key. And it fires right off. It idles smoothly. It just runs like it's meant to be like that, right? So initially it fired off. It ran 30, 40 minutes. We were all flipping out. We loved it, you know? I'm over here emotional. I'm crying like a big baby. That's not true. I had one single tear. I had my parents. I couldn't hold in the surprise. I had my dad on FaceTime, and I just walk over to the car. Check this out. There's smoke billowing out of the car. Well, it's not really smoke. It's like cobwebs coming out of the tailpipe, and it's running flawlessly. There's a group of guys out here, and I mean, we worked from 6 o'clock in the morning until 1 o'clock the next day, right? So we had put in a nice day's worth of work. We were all exhausted. Nobody ate. I lost my wallet in the process. It was miserable. But we got it running. I shut the car off after I hang up the phone with my dad. We're all high-fiving. I go to turn the key. I'm like, what the hell? The battery died. I checked the battery voltage. Nah. Battery, battery was perfect. It was flawless. All men had been charging. We even swapped Nothing. one. We swapped the battery. We pulled the, we pulled the Optima out of the jet. Well, Two issues. One, with us losing power to the computer, it wouldn't let it start, right? So I had to chase that wire down. So what we do, we temporarily it directly to the battery, not necessarily the greatest way. We finally did find a true ignition 12 volt source. So that's fixed. I just gotta route the wire so it looks pretty. But I don't know if y'all know this, but I call it the head crusher. It's the GM old school 350 starter. It's about this big for the body. And then it got about a nose on it. The snout's about this big inside the bell housing. Well, yeah, that did what everything does when you have headers that are, you know, long tubes wrapping around the starter. It heat soaked it and it completely just ruined the starter. The starter was trash. So what do I do? I tell all these guys, man, I appreciate the help, but they could see it. There was defeat on my face because I wanted that second startup to know that we did a good job. Well, just for S's and G's, I knew that was a problem because I'd had 350s and stuff before with long tubes. So I went out and I bought the ProMaster. <laughs> this is a mini torque starter and it has 3.25 to one gear reduction. So when you look up the specs on this particular model, it has more foot pounds of torque than most of your Hondas. It has 184 foot pounds of torque and it turns it over flawlessly as you heard. So we're not quite done yet. The car has come a long way and I hope to have this at some car shows with my dad. I hope to be able to take the, the Sonoma and go show this off and just spend some good quality time with my father in this car. This has been a long project. It has been a nightmare to find some parts. Uh, if it, a matter of fact, any of y'all out there 72 had the turn signals in the grill. I need some lenses. Help your boy out. That's all I'm saying. I've checked OPGI year one, things like that. There's some chrome that needs to be cleaned up, things like that. But there's still some small fine tuning. Like I said, project cars are never done. They're called project cars for a reason. This car is, this means the world to me. And it's not so much the car. It's the fact that it was me and my dad's project. Me and my dad, we do a lot of stuff together. He's my best friend and we've got a great relationship. And this has just been a great thing to have with him. So the stories that we have, the pictures that you're gonna see, I was always there with my dad doing this stuff. So this car means a lot, not so much the car, but so much of the memories. The car could go away tomorrow and I don't think it would affect me too much, uh, but the memories will last forever. And that is what I love about the car community. Cars will bring people closer together. So please get out there, wrench with your friends, wrench with your families, Get to know somebody that's got a car because the car culture, people build families and friendships that are lifelong. Build them, get to it, have fun, learn something new. I learn something new every day. I do this for a living. But what I'm saying is, is put your heart and soul into it. So YouTube, this is my, my video on the 72 Monty, or as I like to call it, it's the full Monty with me and my dad. And I appreciate y'all being here. Like, share, and subscribe. Give me that 500 mark. Thank you, guys. I'll see you all next time.